called and uh, wanted me to do a, a memorial service. And so I had contact with his family off and on. And during that time it was, I think more off than on. <laughs> uh, but I came to uh, love this family. And, and Keith and I lately have been very, come, become very good friends. And uh, maybe some of you don't know Keith uh, Shonaman, but um, he really has a heart for the Lord. And he actually went to Bible college and um, actually trained to become a pastor or a minister or a missionary. I don't know which one it was. Maybe he doesn't know either. <laughs> but he has a wonderful wife that is, has been a faithful Christian and a support to him. And uh, I, I've been encouraging Keith to um, step in, back into his calling again. And uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a wonderful experience, especially when I asked him uh, to preach. I said, I'm gonna have to go to Hawaii sometime and I need for someone to that I can count on. I don't want to just pick anybody, you know? I want to have somebody who has that Zoe. You know what Zoe means? Anybody know what Zoe means? Life. I want somebody with some Zoe or soul, some life. And so uh, he said, I'll think about it. And uh, so I'd ask him from time to time, you ready? Oh, no, I. I'm kind of nervous about it, you know. <laughs> but he finally did say, you know what? And he's been growing. He's been living a victorious life, like, like how you want to call it, right? And, and he finally said yes. And I said, when? He says, well, the 22nd? I said, okay. I got to talk to my wife, but let's find out this 22nd. Well, Teresa had to play uh, for church. And so he said, well, what about the 29th? And to show you how awesome God is, it just happened that the 28th, the 27th, and 28th is 10th America, 24-hour praise and worship. And, and God knew that I won't have, I'm not like him, have all the time in the world. <laughs> I had only a limited amount of time. And, and here, Keith agreed to do a sermon today. So Keith, thank you very much. And if you want, you, I, uh, my wife can advance the slides, or you can advance it with the remote, whichever. Oh, you. she's fine. Okay. Yeah. Let's give him a hand. Okay. This might. And I'll get you some water too. <laughs> you can get that in here. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've got bigger feet than you've got. <laughs> I can just push it forward. said two words to anybody and I was very bashful and uh, you know I was a kind I just wanted to kind of slip in the back and be the first one to leave you know um, that and so I still kind of that way a little bit but um, but God has really done work in my life and lately uh, 
I'm just going to say this before I get into this, but I was, uh, I was really struggling with an addiction and I could not overcome it. And I tried and I prayed and I tried and I prayed. And it seemed like the harder I tried, the worse it got. And, uh, you know, I, I knew it was displeasing to God, but I just couldn't seem to quit. And then I came across, uh, Russell uh, invited me to celebrate recovery. And at first I was, you know, I was kind of struggling with pride. Oh, I can do this. I don't need that. And, and then I was dealing with a lot of shame as well. Um, but finally I got to the point where God was, he put me on my back and uh, through an accident. And, uh, um, you know, you can't run from God when you're staring at the ceiling. I couldn't run anymore. And so he really dealt with me there and he set me free. And finally when I gave up and just let him work, he set me free. Now. I understand that I can always make a bad decision to go back into that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's still, that weakness is still there, but now I have victory over it. And that victory is beautiful. It just, yeah. I feel so, <laughs> I kind of feel today like I felt when I first got saved. When I first got saved, that was, that was so exciting and so real. My life felt so different. I had purpose, I had an identity, and, and uh, but now, you know, um, now I know that God is, I was kind of questioned, is God really for me, or is he not, or will he really do this, and I saw him do it in other people's lives, but I was like, but will he do it in mine, I don't know, for some reason, I just couldn't quite get there, and uh, God lovingly brought me there to where now I know he's for me, he's for, and if he's for me, he's for everyone. I'm not anything special, but as uh, uh, Russell was saying, um, you know, when we um, when we come to know Christ as our Savior, He transfers us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We are now in His kingdom, um, and so this morning I just kind of wanted to share with you a little bit um, a few of the things that um, the Word. This isn't my opinion. What the Word says about what we have in Christ. Um, he wants us to know him. Uh, time and time in the Bible, I mean, you don't have to read very far in the Bible where God wants people to know him. And God is knowable. Isn't that cool? The God who created the universe wants us to know him. I mean, what an incredible privilege that is. Amen. And so, um, you know, I just kind of named this, uh, uh, I'm gonna go with Philippians 3.10. Yeah, you get that one off. <laughs> one of me's enough up here. Uh, yeah, this was Paul's prayer. He said, I want to know Christ. Now, folks, when he says no, he's not talking about just simple mental assent or realization. This word no is, is, is a participant participatory word. We, we participate in it. We, we, we know him through experience. Um, it's not a dry knowledge. He, he wants us to really know him. There needs to be, he wants us to have emotional content behind this. He says, I want to know Christ. That's the first thing. And then yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. I'm going to leave off that last part, but I just want to do the first part. I want to know Christ and yes, to know the power of his resurrection. To kind of get our minds moving in this direction, uh, John 8.32 um, says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And this verse has meant so much to me in my recovery because I used to think, how is that going to work? I mean, I know Christ. I know the truth. How's the truth going to set me free? But just I was depending on me to do it. And when I let go and just let God do it, he did it. I mean, and I don't know why that surprises me, because if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. I don't, but see, I wasn't really believing it. I, I was the problem there. Um, so that's, but there's our word no again, right? And then in 1 Corinthians 2.12, uh, now these verses, folks, <laughs> I'm going to get a little excited because when I, when I stop and think about the wonderful things God has given to us, now that we are Christians, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. And we have received God's Spirit 
It's not the world spirit, so that we can, there's our word again, know the wonderful things God has freely given us. God gives us these things. He doesn't, you know, he's, he, he's not stingy with them. He wants to give us an abundant life. He promised us that. And that abundant life includes, um, well, the, the list would be longer than you want to be here listening to me. It's such a, a long list of things that God gives us. So I want to go into Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. And if, 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 if you're, you know, I'm, you're familiar, Ephesians chapter 1 talks a lot about the things that God gives us. You know, he's adopted us into his family. He's redeemed us. He's forgiven us. He's given us his Holy Spirit. All these wonderful things, right? But this is, he presents this in the form of a prayer. And he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Uh, I'm going to go to the next verse there. And he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart... Now, I find this interesting, guys, because he doesn't say the eyes of your mind. He wants us to go deeper. He wants us to go into our inner selves, not just stick, I mean, our mind plays a part of this, but he wants it to go deeper. He wants us to really know him. The eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope, we're gonna key in on that word in just a minute, the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, um, uh, I think I left that part off, sorry. I'll just finish it here. And, and his incomparably great power for the, those of us who believe. So, there, so we find three things here right away. This is part of our inheritance, guys. Our hope, our inheritance, and, and power. These are all very beautiful things. You know, now this, this word hope doesn't carry with it the idea of, man, I, I hope this happens, or I hope that happens, you know. It, there's kind of an uncertainty behind that. No, the hope that God gives us is based on His character and His promises. So when I, when I say I hope, you know, my hope is in God. It's it's a it's it's an eager expectation. It's an expectation because it's based on what God has told me. He has promised me these things, and so that's a lot different isn't it it's it, instead of cross your fingers and hoping something happens no this is based on the character of God he does not lie he never has never will so Romans 15 13 says may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit is the one who works this into our lives and uh, as I was going through this, I found a couple of things that were really interesting. Uh, a couple of ways that hope affects our lives, how God works hope into our lives to help us. In Hebrews 6.18, it says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things it is possible for God to lie. We who have, now here's the, what, where I want to key in on we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Now see, he goes right for the soul again, right? He's going for something deeper. He, he doesn't want us just to have this mental knowledge of this. That's part of it, but he wants it to run deeper, deep, deep where we live. He wants it to go to our roots. Um, and you know, when things come up in life that are overwhelming for us, we all need hope. I mean, look at what's going on in our world now. I mean, it, outside of Christ, I mean, it, hope is kind of, finding sources of hope are, well, slim, <laughs> slim to none, really, about, apart from Christ. And in 1 John 3.3, 3, uh, so, so that, that hope is, is referring to helping us through um, conflicts in our lives, catastrophes, disappointments, loss, you know, um, setbacks. This one 
Um, this is one I think is pretty cool. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And I'm, I'm actually going to read the, the verse right ahead of that because that goes part of this. He says, we know that when Christ appears, now that's when Christ comes back, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And then uh, this, uh, all who have this hope in him purify themselves. This is what helps, this is what helps um, the, per the recovery guy, me, to stay with Christ because I know where I'm going. I, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be with Christ in heaven. And that is a great deterrent from keeping me from getting into the wrong stuff, making the wrong choices. Be because, uh, you know, it's like, why mess that up, right? And we have to remember that all, all of this is progressive. You know, progressive sanctification is what the theologians call it. it, it it's, a, it's a process. We don't just get here overnight, but we progressively move toward that. So that's, that's just a little bit on the word hope. Now the next word was inheritance. And this is in Colossians 1.12, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So he has given us an inheritance. That just shows that. And then in Romans 8.16, it says the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now this is important, guys, because it says, now if we are children, then we are heirs. I mean, we can't get into an inheritance if we're not an heir of it. We are uh, heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. One of the authors that I kind of came across, he made this statement, it's kind of it's kind of wordy, but basically he said that God's inheritance is all of the spiritual good provided in and through Christ, and particularly participating, um, particularly all that is contained in the hope that was grounded on the promises of God. So our hope is grounded on Christ. It's grounded on, again, the character of God and his promises. These aren't just things that I, I dream up and, oh, I'd like to have this and I'd like to have that. No, I mean, it's got to be grounded in what God says, because this is his word, and he's going to keep his promises. The last word here is power. And of course, we all, we all know we need power. Um, you know, I, I can tell you from experience that overcoming an addiction, I, I didn't have the power to do it on my own. I just didn't have it. As hard as I tried, as hard as I tried, I could not do it. And it seemed like the more I tried, the worse it got. I mean, how frustrating is that? You talk about losing hope. I can't remember how many mornings I woke up and I just felt hopeless. I mean, there were some days, honestly, folks, I was wondering if I was losing my sanity because I just was, you know, it seemed like there was no hope, but there was, <laughs> but I wasn't turning to him. Uh, he was there all the time. And, and I'm so glad that he lovingly and patiently worked with me and, you know, and, and, and he finally had to break me. He, he broke my willful spirit and then once, once he did that, then he, I opened up to him and, oh, I, you know, it's just been different. I mean, it's the, diff it's the difference between light, night and day, light and darkness. 2 Peter 1.3 says his divine power has given us everything we need. Now that word everything doesn't mean some things, it doesn't mean this list, but not this list, or maybe here, but not here. Everything, he has given us, I mean, what a loving God we have. He has provided everything we need. And that is, that is physical, that's mental, emotional, spiritual, that's all of us, that's the whole uh, person. For a godly life through our, you know, there's our word knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
And that kind of goes on to say, you know, through 